Hello and welcome back to the woods or forest. I've come back to a location I came to oh uh, a week, maybe two weeks ago, and I was looking for a base camp. Now I have considered staying more local, but quite simply, this forest offers so much building material in such a condensed area that. Uh, I think this will be my best bet to do a decent uh, bushcraft shelter for me to use a few times. I've made it possibly two, three hundred metres further than my entry into this wood or entry point into this uh, wood um, on the last occasion where I then ended up uh, discovering those mine shafts where I didn't think there would be any. I've tracked along the wood line, looking over the open moor, and I'm making my way to a landscape feature, which whether it's dark, misty, um, foggy, I can use that as a reference point to then go further and deeper into this wood line. The reason I'm so concerned about going deeper into this wood line, and it goes back a long, long way, you know, You've got miles of the stuff in here. The reason for that is quite simply, I'll let you have a look. And um, it's pretty sad to see. And it's also a reminder that uh, not everybody, you know, treats the wood or feels the same about the woods as possibly a lot of us do. So I've tracked along this, uh, well, it isn't really a path, it's a bit of an obstacle course, but I'm a fair way on from where I gained entry into this wood and possibly quarter mile, half a mile in that direction, you would find those mine shafts. But you can see I'm staying close to the moorland boundary. It's just out there. And I'm working my way to a natural um, re-entrant or valley which I can use as my starting point to get further back in here. And it's rainy, gloomy, and it's not very nice. There's loads of these water channels, but I want to get uh, further away from these. I've made my mind up quite simply because I'll let you have a look. So this is my kit that I'm bringing in, but here, you can see somebody's obviously used, this is a camp. I do not even want to know what's in that bloody bag there. And obviously somebody's got a medical condition of some sort there. But they've just left their trash here. They haven't carried it out. Pretty much the same as last time. And I suspect if I continue along this wood line here, um, ne next to the um, moor, I'll probably find more of this stuff. I'm just guessing. But... Once I find my reference point, which is easily findable in harsh conditions, I'm then going to push off down into the wood. Hi guys, and uh, we've actually got to the feature that I can see out on the moorland, to what I can see on my map so I'm happy with that I've got a compass and uh, what I'm going to do with this compass is discover where north is so looking at it I can see north is heading in that direction there I'm going to orientate my map and that's quite simply getting the map pointing in the direction my compass is pointing so that you know I have an understanding on the map by standing here, when I look around, what I see on the map is what I actually can see here or where I can visualize where it is on the map. Right then, after examining my best options on the map, because I'm gonna be walking on a bearing, I don't know what's up there, as in you know, a good location to build. I'm gonna put my base plate onto the map i'm going to put the base plate pointing in the direction i believe i want to walk to and from there i'll have a bearing based on what the reading is on the actual dial now 
I'm not doing a map reading lesson here. Um, you know, I may touch on that at another uh, uh, video. But I'm just explaining to you how I'm going to find my way into the woods, not using an electrical device. I know your phones will have apps or features that may allow you to use it to navigate at some uh, degree of um, you know success. But I'm using a map and compass here. So I'm going to set my bearing and let me just do that from where I am here and I'm there. I want to walk over there and set my, get my bearing there. So I now have a bear and I can walk at. And basically, I will follow the line of this compass into that direction with the arrow marked on the actual compass. So yeah, without, like I said, doing a, a map lesson, I'm using very basic map reading techniques with a compass to get myself further up into the woodland. So when I come back, I should be able to find it regardless of how deep I go into that wood. Well, this is a different day and I'm walking the dog and uh, we've started to just come out the back of a, uh, a weather system of nearly, a, not quite a storm, but it was high winds and rain. And uh, that last segment you saw me there discussing navigation. Well, I had a weather warning uh, come in to me and <laughs> it was stating high winds and rain and it was like imminent. And, you know, it did actually come in and uh, we did get hit by high winds and rain. So with the widow makers there and everything like that, I did make the right decision to pull the plug on it. Um, disappointed and despondent. Uh, that's the second time I failed on that location. But uh, yeah, I'm in the lane, so I'm walking uh, Bracken. And well, the weather is looking like it's just beginning. It's, it's Monday and it's looking like it's just about to clear. I've got a few things to do. I've got to drop a welder back to somebody. And on top of that, I've got some wood burning to do. And then uh, I'm going to see what the situation for me looks like to get out again. The sky is still looking pretty heavily laden with grey clouds and um, I'll just let you see if I can get the mast up. On top of that hill you might just see a mast. Now that mast is actually just coming into view and disappearing in the clouds. It's a very faint line. At night you can see uh, you know aerial uh, red lights on it. But the clouds are that though, they're just skirting the top of that hill there with that radial mast. I'm wearing a high vis and um, I don't always wear high vis unless I know I'm going to be hit by heavy traffic. But these lanes don't see a lot of heavy traffic. But I'm wearing one because, um, well, quite simply, um, I almost got knocked over here the other day and. There's a thing called the National Health Service and Health Authorities, which provide um, at-home care for very elderly people that can't look after themselves or don't have the means to go into a home or, you know, family just needs a help looking after an elderly relative. To cut a long story short, it means, and it's traditionally, you know, um, a lot of younger girls do perform that role fantastic people to actually do that and obviously we need them to do it but um they're obviously under time pressures to get to the next client <laughs> i'm walking down this single track lane and as you can see the hedges are getting a bit overgrown and uh this car comes screaming up around the corner and it's one of these young girls slams her brakes on skids and all the all manner of things like that i dive in the hedge and uh you know she looks a little bit embarrassed and I kind of just smile and nod to her like, you know, yeah, I'm okay. And she went on, just started walking down the road. Well, obviously, 30 seconds later, her, her mate, who's obviously, it's obviously an elderly person that needs two people for lifting and things. Exactly the same thing. <laughs> and um, 
you know i understand that they're under time pressures and everything like that so uh hey i've got a high vis because i'm doing my best not to get killed dock walking well i'm in the workshop and i'm about to start the wood burning i've just dropped the actual welder back and i used that to make a tool for myself um it looks pretty crude excuse the welding it's pretty pretty rough um but um yeah this is a, another tool i've made for helping debark and to be blatantly honest with you this isn't a tool for finesse it's literally something just to rip the bark off and go from there um it does work and i'm going to paint it up and get it looking uh, a little bit better run the grinder over it a bit more but yeah you know i've done a few little jobs like that i wanted to do with the actual welder but i've taken it back and um yeah i'm in the workshop and i've got two sticks i'm going to burn i think i mentioned that and uh and we're also you can see i've cleared all the shelves of um videos and things like historic um family games and stuff like that where they've been there half the pieces were missing half the dvds were missing from the boxes they're gone um and i'm just filling the shelves up with stuff that we've had inside from shelves and units that were basically doing a little bit of remodeling and rejigging the house to suit our needs better so i'm gradually filling that up but uh yeah I'm actually starting to or I'm going to be doing some wood burning on these two sticks here and they're beautiful sticks if I do say, mo say so myself. Yeah so they've had pretty much their final sanding. Um, they've been shaped slightly different on the, on the handles and whoop, get this uh, so it doesn't fall off. I don't want to have to sand out any dents. You can see the difference in the style of handles there. I've got that coming more up over to give a more aggressive peak. And this one is gently sloped. And it's got more of like a axe handle style to it. And I think it looks quite nice. But the whole sticks, or both the sticks shall I say, they are straight as pins. Looking glorious. And I'm looking forward to wood burning these, finishing up, and then getting the actual um, uh, varnish on the top, just to actually uh, set it or set the wood off and see what they look like. So quite often when I get a custom order, it comes in various forms. Somebody just walking through the door and literally just going, can you do this? I want this. Write it down. And off they go and I don't see them and I just say two weeks time it'll be ready and they turn up. Sometimes it's over the internet through Facebook and um, you know then cost contacting me through Messenger. And then obviously they can leave a written explanation which is quite handy because I can always go back to it because sometimes I forget. It's like what's happened to one of these sticks. Um, one of them's for a young lad, quite a tall young lad. Um, who wants a deer and a rabbit and obviously his initials now the other one i'll quickly show you how you know quite often it just happens so yeah i've been given a piece of paper like this i've got my thumb over our last name because obviously you know privacy and all that but this here is pretty much how i get given it and now i've got to transfer this to the stick so it can be as, as rudimentary as this as well. A piece of paper thrust at me with a little bit of uh, information and to get that onto the stick. I've got a couple jobs here stacking up for myself. And on my favourite surfboard here, you can see some shatter marks. They've just occurred over a 12 month period. Um, when I'm surfing in amongst a lot of people, people who don't know what they're doing, they'll just ditch their board or run up onto you. They don't know how to turn and things like that. So I've got to cut all that out and I've got to redo that. Um, that's half the reason why I kind of like surfing more isolated parts of the coast. Um, 
I do like surfing with a, a group of people I surf with, but um, it's not them. I mean, the place we go to, Summerlees and Bude, can get heavily, heavily used by inexperienced new surfers. And that's part, it's pointless getting angry about it because it's part and parcel of the surf experience. Shouldn't be, but it is, unfortunately. Now those clouds look pretty, pretty black and it has been raining. It's supposed to have been clearing up by now. This is still the remnants of the storm I was talking about. Um, I've put a gazebo up. I don't know why I've done it. We've had it. It was for the summer, but um, as things uh, work out and you kind of get requested or should we say told to put it up, um, I've put it up. I've got it roped off just about everywhere I can think of to try and keep it secure and I think the kids are going to have their tea in it they want to sleep in it but um, that's not going to happen but yeah um, I'm not I'm not sure if I'm going to leave this up tonight because I've got sandbags holding it down as well I'm not sure it's a good idea me leaving it up but um, yeah I'm going to take one quick look just to admire my handiwork, make sure it's all okay, and then I've got to hit the workshop. So I'm about to start the wood burning, and I really enjoy this part. I enjoy the custom aspect of it, like when a customer has actually specifically thought about what they want on a stick. And a custom stick, and I've talked about it before, isn't just what they have wood burn on it. It will come in what size they want, the bark left on, bark taken off, what size copper tip, what type of handle they want, what colour lanyard they want. Do they want a brown or grey one? There's, there's a whole raft of options that make up a, a custom stick. And obviously, as I've said before, a custom stick gets just that little bit more time and attention to it and i think it shows when i present when i present the finished item to the customer i i do feel in my heart that i've given just that little bit more to the customer now people have started to wake up to the fact a hiking stick is actually that it's an actually a tool to aid you off-road in being able to cover more ground and more difficult ground with a lot more ease and possibly speed it really is a great off-road tool and will really aid you now my customer base is quite varied and of all abilities but one thing they have in common they do reach a point where they look at their hiking stick as a tool and they actually want to customize or personalize it to their own taste to make it part of them now hiking stick making has become part of my outdoors lifestyle and I, indeed i follow the seasons with it from cutting to the, the selling seasons christmas periods I actually do find that, um, you know, everything about it, I follow the calendar through the year. Hiking stick making has become a valued and integral part of our income. I'm a small time crafter and due to our personal circumstances, this just about helps us tick over and keep going along with a few other income streams. But you do what you do. But I'm fortunate in I actually do enjoy doing this to earn some money. Well, in the surrounding area, I've been referred to and called the stick man. And I suppose there's worse things to be called. Right, I think it's time for me to call a close to this video. So all the best. This is Andy from Folklore Hiking Sticks. Take care and I hope to see you guys out on the trail.